Uh, yeah, guys, this is T.I., I'll start with you because, I mean, you've sat there, you've defended the best for years. How impressed are you with what Mitchell was doing offensively and how much he took ownership of this game in the second half? Well, like he said, going to the hole is his strength. He took advantage of that. He said he let him off the hook the first half by shooting a lot of jump shots. And uh, once he got it going, it was hard to um, stop him. And then, Min- I mean, not Minnesota, Oklahoma City were on their heels. This so, is the play. I, I know. Yeah. What do you see good here move, on this? Good spin move. I, I, I thought we was tr- if the Oklahoma City Thunder is trying to help. We gotta we gotta get the ball out of his hands. He's 20, 20 points in the second half. He's cooking. We gotta get make somebody else beat you. And I thought that was a heck of a move. Great deep by Paul George. But if our team coverage is to get those other guys to make shots, let's do that. Let's let's just run the trap out. I want to get both of you guys on this because you were just talking about this, Ryan. From look, Paul George, one of the better defenders in the league. We were all talking about this. But how do you kind of get between PG wants to take him one-on-one and thinks he can, and, hey, look, the smarter play is to get others involved because right now nobody can stop Donovan Mitchell. Man, that's hero ball defensively. We just saw that play again, and when you go back to you and you know it, you look on film, you're going to see three other guys with their hands at their side, not in the stance, not active, and right when he spun, you got to be there for the dig. That's a steal, and we win the game. And also, when you know a kid's hit three or four shots in a row, Griff, we're sending a double. Somebody else has to Paul's beat right him. Up. Am I wrong? The, the thing that really stood out for me in this whole thing is, in addition to everything you guys are talking about, in Look terms at Russ. of Gotta the, be there. the weak side awareness and the game plan awareness and the attention to detail that it would have taken to get the ball out of Donovan's hands, you've played this whole game knowing that no one else on Utah's team is creating offense for you. Yes. So yes. at all, why do you play with fire once he has it rolling? I think PG did an amazing job, particularly in the first half of making things really difficult for Donovan. He was very, very uncomfortable. But to Tony's point, they were much more locked in on the game plan and always showing bodies in the paint and letting him see a wall yes. much yes. more often. And I think the just lost sight of what had been working so very well for them. You know, one of the things that became a major factor we could all talk about in this game, and, and I'll begin with you, Ryan, is that from inside, what he said about favors, 20 and 16, yeah, second, hand point, uh, ch- second chance points were double yes. in favor of Utah. Rebounds, they out-rebound him by a bunch. Inside, when it counted, those extra, those hustle plays, they all seemed to go to Utah. It's funny. I got a chance to talk to Derek Favors before the series, and I told him, as a fellow big guy, he's the last of the Mohicans, and he could be of, of us big guys playing in this small ball era in that he can play inside and outside, and he's an X factor. If he looks at this Thunder roster, there's nobody on that roster who can guard him, and Utah actually plays big, and they're very successful. So when he's in there, it just it gives them an added dimension. And for Rudy Gobert, Rudy played great. Rudy's just more comfortable with Derek Favors on the floor. And the rest of the team, that's how they played. That's how they've been success- successful all season long. I want to get to the other side because we sat there. As you look at Utah and you see what we saw on their end, from the side of, of Oklahoma City, guys, there were some possessions late, including one that stood out to me, Griff, where you could just tell Russ wanted to keep the ball. He got it out of his hands for a second. Melo settles for a deep three. Now look, Melo's hit big shots in his career. We know that. But when you see what Paul George has done the first game into this game, that you know who Russ is. That can't be the shot that you're taking in that Well, spot. and Russ was exasperated on that particular play because I think he did realize if I get off the ball, I can get it back in a better situation. It's the only reason he did it. He very much got off of it expecting to come back around and get it in a better position. So when Melo took the early shot, I think he's frustrated because he saw something there. He saw an opportunity that they didn't capitalize. I'm really struck by by the irony in a night where LeBron does what he does, 46 and 12 tonight, after not being at all aggressive. And here we've got Russell Westbrook with 13 assists in the game, 19 points. And when he wanted to be aggressive and start to turn it on, he just wasn't able to get the ball back. It, it was interesting. How much, Tony, from a defense standpoint, even though we all talk about, well, Russ needs to give it away more, how much is he playing into your hands as a defender and the team on defense if he's giving it up more instead of attacking the basketball? Yeah, it's, 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 it's not much of a headache if you got him passing. A, 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 a willing Westbrook passing, as far as the driving Westbrook, you like your, your chances with him passing. But 
when he attacking down that lane and he doing a little bit of everything, he's great. But tonight, I mean, they went 19 for 58, the big three. We got to have all three of those guys shoot a better percentage if they want to get a win in these playoffs. You know, it, it, it's funny because how do you hit the one in the middle on this, Griff? Because we all sit here all year and we say, ah, oh, well, Russ needs to move the ball, he needs to pass the ball. I mean, I didn't joke with you. You guys did a demo earlier and you said you were Russ. I said, did you shoot? You said no. I said, so you weren't Russ. <laughs> so we, this is all we talk about. But we need to have him more aggressive. So what's the plan got to be going well, into Game 3? I, I think the reason he wasn't able to be as aggressive was Utah did a really good job. It was a very concerted effort on their part to get Adams out of the game. They took Steven Adams out of the game with yep. foul trouble. Steven only played 22 minutes. A huge part of what enables Russ to get going is the roll action from Steven. And everyone that he sucks down into the paint, frankly, illegally screens half the paint down underneath the basket. But he enables Russ to get going downhill to a huge degree. So in his absence, it was just really hard for them to find a way to get him going because they have not run a great degree of guard-guard sort of yep. Uh, screen action. They haven't run Paul and Russ in screen action very often, and that's the kind of thing that would have given Utah a different look when Adams was out of the game. Yep.